Okay. So today we'll start some above. Yeah. 66. Right on the top of the page. Just to put uh, yesterday's the beginning of the Dafyami was my Dvartar for the Lachaim about Moshe Rabbeinu going back. Oh. Shuv, yeah, it was good. <laughs> uh, so you made the future son in law promise that he's not going to leave. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Got to stay in Miami. Now you're talking. <laughs> All right. Okay, so um, we have a we have a Mishnah. We start the Mishnah today. Okay. Thank Hashem that we're able to learn every day. It's for learning. We should have the basic English immediately. So the Mishnah starts Peschen biyomim tovim b'shabbosis. Talking about getting, sorry? Oh, and Rafur Shleima, everyone that needs Rafur Shleima. Um, we say that to get out of a vow, you need a Pesach. You have to have an excuse of why this vow should not be valid. Why, what's, uh, why, why that you regret this vow. If you would have known this and that, you want to take in the vow. So one of the ways out is to tell the person, you should, Usually a vow means that he's not going to have enjoyment from something. They tell the person that, did you know that on Shabbos and Yom Tov, you're supposed to have pleasure? If you, had, if you knew that you were going to need to drink wine on Shabbos, you're going to need to eat fish and meat and on Shabbos and Yom Tov, would you have taken the vow? So he says, no. So he says, okay, that's good. So that would be a way to annul the vow. Now, Originally, they said that when he says, oh, you're right, Shabbos is going to be a problem. Yom Tov is a problem. He shouldn't have taken the vow about Shabbos and Yom Tov. So they said that, okay, so he becomes permissible to have the wine and meat, whatever he took a vow that he wasn't going to have on Shabbos and Yom Tov. But the other days, the vow is still, is still in effect. Rabbi Akiva believed until Rabbi Akiva came and taught. We had this quoted earlier in the Masechta, but this is the source. If there's a vow that's partially uh, annulled, then it's entirely annulled. Yeah, once it's off, it's off. <clears throat> Kate said, an example of this. How is this? Amar kainam she'eni nena l'kolchem. Takes a vow that I'm not going to have enjoyment from, from all of you. Kutar echen meam hotakulam. If one of them gets annulled, so then he, uh, it, it's annulled for everyone. Next case is, let's say he says, I'm not going to have enjoyment from this one. Now, the way the Gemara explains this is that he says, the way it was explained earlier, actually, this uh, Mishnah, that he was told on Zebazer. I'm not going to have enjoyment from this one. And this one is like this one. He points to the next one. He puts it. He, he references it back to the first one, that the next one is going to be like the first one. Well, what's going to happen now is if the first one gets annulled, then the second one that was dependent on him or that was, that was a vow because of, it was, uh, it was um, like, hang, it's the expression, is it's hanging on him. So then he's also annulled. However, if the last one gets annulled, because he says this one is like should be like this one, and this one should be like this, and this. So if the last one gets annulled, then all the previous ones are still pro prohibited. But if the earlier ones get annulled, then the later ones are also. It's like a chain a link. It's not. A, it's not. Um, it's not a stipulation. Um, I'm not sure if that's called a stipulation. I don't know if that's called a stipulation. No, you're saying it's a stipulation like this one should be also to me if this one is also to me so that that would be a stipulation um, but he's really saying that this one is like this one saying that it's not also if this guy's not also then this one's not also 
sort of a, sort of a stipulation. Okay, now we have Hutterham Tsai. Let's say a middle one gets annulled. They annulled the valve for a middle one. What examples of that would be? I didn't know that he was going to make the wedding. I didn't know that he was going to become a cipher. I didn't know that, you know, like the Mishnayas before. So then, from him and on, it's permissible. Anyone that was dependent on him being prohibited would be now permissible. And anyone that was before him in this chain would be um, still prohibited. Here, he, he's again making several people prohibited. But he's saying a carbon to each one, like kainam, a carbon. So this one is prohibited to me like a sacrifice. This one is prohibited to me like a sacrifice. So those become independent vows. It's not like we said before that each one is dependent on the other one or they're grouped together. Well, then you would need to annul each and every one of them independently. Let's say he says, I'm not going to have wine. And he adds in, because wine is bad for the stomach. Is it bad for the stomach? Uh, it depends how much. <laughs> but that everything is bad for the stomach, depends how much. Depends how yes. <laughs> um, they told him, but old wine is good for the stomach. Aged wine is good for the stomach. So that he made a mistake. Thought it was bad for the stomach. It depends on who pays for the advertising. That's really what it is. The gut milk. <laughs> he gave a reason. Because he gave that reason, so then it's going to be permissible. Not only is he permissible with aged wine, but it's even permissible with all wine, because once... Right? There are two versions of that. Let's say he says, He says, I'm not going to have onions because onions are, uh, are bad for the heart. They tell him, It is good for the heart. The kufri, kufri is either a, a place or a type of onion. It's a, there is a type of onion that's good for the heart. We had this quoted before. We said that not only is he permissible for kufri onions, which are good for the heart, but he's even permissible for all onions. Because once a nether is partially permitted, it's entirely permitted. I'm sorry. The Gemara says, If the last one becomes permissible, because he gets an annulled, then only the last one is permissible, but the earlier ones are still prohibited. Now, what we're what we're saying here is that this is only if he if he doesn't say carbon for each one, if he says carbon for each one, then that switches it. Then each one becomes a separate nether. Okay. But if he just joins it all together in one, I'm not going to have benefit from this one and this one and this one. So then they're all dependent one on another. But if he says, I'm not going to have benefit from this, a sacrifice to have benefit from this one, a sacrifice to have benefit from that one. So then they become separate ones and then they have to be annulled independently. Mantana, who is the one that says this, that until he says carbon for each one, it's considered like one, one uh, group, one unit. Amarava Rib Shimonhi. Rava says that it's Rib Shimon. This throws us into Masach the Shvuas, where a person uh, swears falsely and he becomes uh, obligated to, to correct that, whatever, when he swears falsely with the sacrifice. Let's say five people come to him and say, You owe us money. And he takes an oath and he says the, in the oath that I don't owe you, 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 and you. So then we find out that he's lying. He's only obligated for one oath. But if he says uh, an oath that I don't owe you, an oath that I don't owe you, an oath that I don't, he says the oath with each one. So then that would separate the oaths and he'd be obligated for five oaths. So it depends on the wording that he uses when he makes the oath. So if that's the case, then that's Rip Shimon's view over there. 
that's what we're saying is the, the view of our mission as well, that if he says a sacrifice that I want to benefit from you, a sacrifice I don't want to benefit from you, that would divide up the oath. But until then, if he just says a sacrifice that I won't have benefit from you, 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 and you, so then that's really one oath. And if one of them gets absolved, then the whole thing gets absolved. <coughs> Sounds like Klal of Prat. Yeah. 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 No, that it's more like not the Klal It's more like Leila Lamed ala Klal ala Leila Lamed ala Atzma Yatsa Lamed ala Klal Kula Yatsa. It's not talking about itself. It's talking about everyone. Yeah. Um, you know, like sometimes, right? Sometimes they're like they're pressured to do this, you know, like, oh, oh, do this, oh, and then they kind of like right. just switch the words around to where it's not to be like, right? Right. Some of the comments I said that about the Gemara yesterday, like how could Sitzki uh, uh, lie, took an oath? Well, it's not, he got it, he, he got it annulled. Um, was an example they gave. They said, there was an example that was given the son of Masha. He said, swear by the God, to the God of Israel, you won't reveal it. And then he said, well, I didn't reveal it to the God of Israel. I revealed it to Israel. So he played with the words. You follow? Swear to the God of Israel that you won't reveal it. Depending on where you put the comma. You, you then switch that. I didn't reveal it to God. I revealed it to everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> but see, kids. <laughs> right. So in that case, you don't want to have to get it annulled. I think you're still supposed to get it annulled. Yeah. Okay. Kainim yayin shani tayim. Takes a vow that he's not going to have wine because, and he adds in because wine is bad for the stomach. So they um, they they then tell him that no, it's not wine. Old wine, aged wine is good for the stomach. So the Gemara asks over here. I'm rely, I'm I'm sorry. The Gemara says typically the ra. Why does it have to say that no, it's not wine is good for the stomach? Could have just said no, it's not. It's not bad for the stomach. But if you say it's good for the stomach, it would have been already a, a not valid oath if he would have said, just told him that he's mistaken. It's, it's nothing for the stomach. Why do you have to go to the extreme? It means that not only is it not bad for the stomach and therefore your oath is not an oath, but it, it happens to be it's even good. So that's just adding in an extra point, but that wasn't necessary for the halacha. Said the same thing. This is gonna. We're just repeating this with the, the onion. Onion we said is bad for the heart. So we said uh, no, it's not. Uh, the it's kufri onions are good for the heart. It's for typically dein ra. Why do you have to tell me that it's good? Just tell me that it's not bad. Yeah, yeah. Why does it have to repeat this? Onion, onion. Well, well, we could have said maybe that in order for the vow, in order for the vow to be really invalid, it would have to be so wrong. Right. Well, the mission that we were surprised that the mission was using an example that wasn't exactly that accurate with what with the halacha. So. Okay. Another type of Pesach is we tell the person you would know what people would say about you now that you've taken all these vows. Or if you'd know what people say about your children now that you've taken all these vows, messing up things for their uh, Shaduchim and, and um, friends and everything. So would you have taken the vow? 
And he says, no, I wouldn't have. So they say, okay, that's a good Pesach. After he mentioned that, like I noticed, like a week previously, now it was the Pesach of Rabbi, which was... Yeah, yesterday we had it quoted, over here is the source. Yesterday we were quoting it. I'm Rimlai. They tell the person, if you would have known, that tomorrow they're going to say about you, this is the habit. This is a, is a habit, a cycle. This is the, the pattern. This is the person's pattern. Uh, he divorces his wives. And then about the children, the daughters, they're going to say the daughters of a divorcee. Now, the, 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 uh, the negative side of that is they think, why she she get divorced? Because the mother was uh, m- m- misbehaved, you know, immodest, uh, some misconduct. So, what was the, uh, what was the cause? Why did they get divorced? You know, like, uh, tell me the, uh, what went wrong. So, um, that's going to be the talk, the, the talk of the town. Now, what really happened was he took a vow that his wife can't have benefit from him, so they had to get divorced. So, but because of his uh, cycle, his pattern, his habits of taking vows, it's messing up everything, the, his uh, reputation and uh, his reputation, the children's reputation. So, would you have taken the vow? I would have known that this is what's going to happen to my reputation. I never would have taken the vow. Then that's a good way of annulling the vow. Kainam Shani Nasius Plainus Kaura Varina takes a vow, I'm not going to marry this woman because she's ugly. And it turns out that she's actually beautiful. Shaira, I'm not going to marry because she is, we learned this yesterday, because she's um, dark complexion. Very Lavana, she has a, a fair complexion. Kitsara Vari Arucha, she's, uh, she's short. It turns out that she's actually tall. Mutaba, he's allowed to, to uh, marry her. Blame they she could have an asana, not because. It was Noila, something changed in her, that she became beautiful. She went to a plastic surgeon. They could do that too. They could change the, uh, the color, not because she changed the color. Uh-huh. Short, she became tall. This is possible. Tall and short and became tall because they would marry very young. They don't know what they're going to, they can still grow, uh, right? What, when did people stop growing? The, when they don't go there's no age. Is there? Oh, no, I'm saying, <laughs> it's because the, it was the whole thing was a mistake from originally, not because of Nilod, but because originally it was a mistake. <laughs> okay, now we're going to quote a story. So, in the Gemara. When, when it says originally a mistake, I mean, does that mean he never saw the person who was based on Lush and Hara? He yeah. heard she's ugly this, that, because if he saw her, he couldn't have made that mistake. No, he yeah. saw her right after. Uh, you know, she got it, tan. right <laughs> after something, yeah. It turns out that wasn't what. Uh, she put her makeup on. Yeah. It's like the story. The makeup on. Is going to sing. Yeah. The next yeah, yeah, case yeah, yeah. is very similar. It's, it's a different ending. <laughs> I thought that was coming was that the, the joke with the Shadchan. He says she's blind and she's mute and she's, she's lame and said, well, she won't be able to see all your uh, mistakes. She won't be able to yell at you, uh, you know, and this, she won't be able to catch up with you to hit you with the frying pan. And, <laughs> Those are all my lists, you know. Those are advantages. Okay. My Sabahad Shinadar Bibasa Khaisai Hana. Story of someone that um said that he's not gonna have any benefit from uh his niece. His niece. Now, this would be a, a classical case because it was according to Allah, you're allowed to marry your niece. Allowed to marry your niece, that would mean that that would be something that would even be um you know, encouraged it's in the family. It's uh, on both sides. Take one hand, or is it no, same thing. 
So um, this guy, of course, is being, uh, you know, um, nudged. You know, you're going to marry your niece. No, no. Uh, he says, oh, that's it. I'm not uh, going to have any benefit from her. Well, um, and then um, she can't, went into the house of Rabbi Shmuel. I guess maybe like he adopted her, sort of. The Yafua, the the Yafua, and he he made her beautiful. We're gonna see what he did. I'm the Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Shmuel said, "Bni," says my son, Mizuna Darka. You took a vow. You're not gonna marry this girl. She's beautiful. I'm the Lav. He said, "I never said that. I wouldn't. Not. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have said that." The Atira Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Shmuel said it's permissible. In other words, what just happened here, the Gemara is going to ask this question, is that this is a, the story is different than the halacha that we just quoted. Usually you quote a, say a halacha, you say a story, that we have a story that matches. The halacha that we said before was that, what would, she, why would he be permitted to marry this girl? Was because he didn't know that she was really beautiful. He thought she was he thought that she was ugly, but really she was beautiful the whole time. And what just happened here in the story with Rabbi Shmuel is that she actually wasn't beautiful, and Rabbi Shmuel made her beautiful. Gumer is going to say that he gave her a new tooth, a, a gold tooth. He gave her a gold tooth. So, so. She always had. She always had the potential to. Oh, so one second. So, but the problem is that it doesn't match with the with but the logic. Say that, okay, so okay, yeah. If you say that, then it would. Rabbi Shmuel cried at that time. Really, all the Jewish girls—they're all beautiful. The reason why they're why possibly they're not—that's only because of the poverty that makes them look look disgusting. Oh, is that what it is? Because plastic know. surgery is so expensive. So the When Rabbi Shmuel passed away, the the Jewish girls they were lamenting and they said, "Nice Yisrael, al Rabbi Shmuel bechena, cry for Rabbi Shmuel, cry over Rabbi Shmuel." Bechinu ayim b'shol, nice Yisrael al shol bechena, and also by shol, King Shol, they said, um, "Cry." The, the Jewish girls cry for shol. But maybe um, Shaul gave them uh, cloths of some sort. Right. Right. Okay. The Gemara asks, my solicitor, the Gemara contradicts the, the Mishnah, the story of the Mishnah contradicts the halacha of the Mishnah. Which usually you don't do. So the Gemara explains that we have to add in some words. It goes like this. Oh, I guess it's, a, it's just read what you read who goes through the, how similar the stories was because when it says that uh, Shul uh, made them beautiful, they use the word Shani, and Shani is like Shem. Oh, wow. And then another thing it says mentions gold adornments. And the gold too. Right. So it really was very nice. Very nice. Uh, you, you need to get a computer. Come on. Oh. Okay. Um, when you mentioned the list, it reminds me, I think I heard yesterday that um, uh, Yaakov's daughter. Siblings might have married. Right, the children. Right. Yeah. Everything is. Right. So, the Mishnah is missing a, a phrase. You have to add in the phrase. It goes like this Rabbi Shmalayim Rafil Kula Venasis Nash, Kher Venasis Tavanak, Tzar Venas Sarucha. Even if they became beautiful, if they were uh, dark complexion, became light, more lighter. She moved to a colder climate. Ktsar of an Azaruch, short, and she grew. My Sebechet Shanad and Basachesa, Vachni Solabes Rabbi Shmuel Yafa. And now we have a story that matches that. In other words, Rabbi Shmuel's opinion is different than the stages. Shmuel's opinion is 
is that uh, that you're allowed to use a new circumstance to annul a vow. That's what Rabbi Shemal is saying. Unless you accept uh, Dr. Stein's shot, that what, um, what Rabbi Shemal actually is saying is that in this instance, for a Jewish girl to become more beautiful, that's because she always was. And then Rabbi Shemal doesn't really hold. We have to add that in, but uh, that's not, it's not how the round line. Okay. Tana taught in a brisa shame take tevas vesala. She had a false tooth. Vasala Rabbi Shmuel shame shall zavat mishalai. And Rabbi Shmuel made her a gold tooth. Right. Exactly. And would that be a change of circumstance? Changes. You know, like your husband, like when she's in a guanate, she wears like fancy clothing and she, you know, her husband, future husband realizes. Right. According to Dr. Stein, it's not a change in circumstance. Okay. <laughs> You're getting a trophy. Okay. Kishach of Rabbi Shmuel. When Rabbi Shmuel passed away, Paschalu Saftana Hachi, the uh, the eulogizer said the following: "Bnei Yisrael, Rabbi Shmuel Bechena, cry." He tells the Jewish girls, "Cry for Rabbi Shmuel, Amal Bishchen Chulu, that clothes you with the clothing of the." Uh, <laughs> and this is already Rabbi Shmuel Ben Chalafta. No, that would be Rabbi Yosi. That would be Rabbi Shmuel Ben Rabbi Yosi Ben Chalafta. It was a Rabbi Shmuel ben Rabbi Yaisi. ben Alisha. This is Rabbi Shmuel ben Alisha, the second, I think. Not the kind Gadol, the one, the friend no, of Rabbi he's, Akiva. He's a peer of Akiva. Right. right. In Chassidus, it's explained that the Benayis Yisrael is the Neshama when it comes down here. So the Neshama, oh, they're always beautiful. Elisha, Nius, and Aval. Right, beautiful. Hear that? Chaim. Chaim says, Chassidus explains that the Nice Yisrael is talking about the Neshama. And when it comes down, then the Aeneas, the, the, the Gashmias, or the, that, uh, I guess the body, that could uh, make it look like it's, but the Neshama itself is always pure. It's always beautiful. Oh. <laughs> Yitzhi says he thought that was a Baskal. <laughs> Okay. Um, someone tells his wife. Someone tells his wife. I'm not going to have any benefit from you until you go have Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon taste your food. This is a wild uh, husband. <laughs> He wants his wife's, uh, let's see what they say about your food. So, um, Rabbi Yehuda time, Rabbi Yehuda said, okay, I'll taste that. And he says, uh, Rabbi Yehuda, he says, in order to make peace between husband and wife, if a, if a, a woman is accused of, uh, or suspected of committing adultery, so they have her, the name of Hashem uh, uh, dissolved in the water and she drinks it. And then if she's pure, she goes back to her husband. In order to make peace between her and her husband, she drinks the name of Hashem gets, uh, gets um, erased. So so for me, I shouldn't taste the food to make peace between a husband and wife. Sounds like a good, uh, good logic. Rib Shimon like time. Rib Shimon doesn't need it. Amar Yamusu kol b'nei almana al yasu shimon min kaimai. Let all the uh, children of the widow die, which means basically that the husband, the husband should die, and the children. And Shimon's not going to change. Uh, and also, he didn't want uh, people to make vows like that. And then this is going to get really out of hand. People just make vows, and then the the, the rabbis have to do everything, you know, to 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 fix it. Yeah, why was uh, Reb Shimon so strict? Um, yeah. 
right. Any comments? Anyone have any comments? Does he own this chorus for well, there is. We do know that someone that takes vows says there's a punishment. Someone that takes vows, his wife should die and his children should die. We had a, a like heavy, heavy terms like that. Someone that doesn't vow and doesn't keep it or something. Oh, he was more strict about Nadarim. Uh huh. You know the the. Uh, the, um, in the case of the site that the husband acted properly and was correct to bring it to the temple to drink the site water. Here, however, the husband could request the, the, the dissolution of his vow and therefore there's no not need for him to compromise his dignity. That's the matter of his. I, I would imagine the you know, modern uh, novelists, they like to write books about biographies about the I'd say this one liked uh, other people's food. This one refused to eat other people's food. You know, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ahu um, the bisu. Someone told his wife, "I'm not going to let you have benefits from me until you spit on Reb Shimon Ben Gamliel." Asas raket al this, there was one with Reb Mayer, and I don't know where that story is. It, that may be a, uh, maybe in the um, in, in the notes they'll quote that there's a medrash I think with Reb Mayer. A woman came home late Friday night. The husband says, "Where were you?" She says, "I was uh, at Reb Mayer's drasha." Yeah, it's in the Mendi and the Golan. <laughs> he said. Uh, I forget what he was saying over there. He has a pain in his eye. He's, right. Oh, with the spit. The wife, the wife, the wife, the wife spit in the rabbi's eye. Right. 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 That was a great story. So here, uh, she went and she spat on his um, on his clothing. Amalei Ravach Midifti Ravina. Ravach Midifti says to Ravina many generations later, The husband wanted it, wanted to spit on him, not on his clothing. No, Shimon's clothing is also an embarrassment because uh, he probably had fancy clothing. Um, uh, maybe the reason why it wouldn't be an embarrassment is because clothing in those days was probably more dirty than it was today. I was a little spit on the clothing. Okay, whatever. It wasn't, uh, you know, they didn't have the same way of dry cleaning and they didn't, you know, they clean the clothing when they got it. They went down to the river, you know, and they had one garment anyway. So it wasn't so embarrassing, but for Shem Megam Leal, that was embarrassing. Rabbi Yehuda is Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Lai, and Rabbi Shimon is Rabbi Shimon Bayochai. Those are students of Rabbi Akiva. Who damalud la debisu kainim shiat nenesi at shetiri mum yafa shabach la Rabbi Shmuel bar Rabbi Yisi. Now, now we have Rabbi Shmuel bar Rabbi Yisi. Someone tells his wife, "I'm not." Uh, uh, I'm not. I'm not going to have any. You can't have any benefit from me until you show your two versions here. Either you show your mum, your your best mum. That means even from all your uh, your bad uh, features, you show one that has a little bit of good in it. But it really, I think the commentators want to read it as meuma. Meum meuma means anything. Show anything good about you. Rabbi Shmuel Bar Abiyasi can find one thing that's good about you. Then I'll stay uh, married to you. I'll... Well, Amalahem, so Rabbi Shmuel Barbiesi says, I guess the girl herself doesn't come. Shemarashina, maybe her head is nice. Amala Sagalgal, they said, no, her head is round. Shemasarana, maybe her, like a ball. Shemasarana, maybe her hair is nice. Daimalanitsi Pishnan. It's like a uh, steel wool. <laughs> it's like flax, like stalks of flax. Shema is now nice. Maybe her eyes are nice. It's not true to saying they're, they're round. Shema is now nice. Maybe her ears are nice. Kula is saying they're, they're folded over. They're bent over. Shema Chaitmana. Maybe her nose is nice. This is Balam Ho. No, it's uh, sunken in. Balam means like it's a stub. She has translated the ears double themselves. Oh, Kula's. Oh, that you want to say that? No, not me. I, I thought it meant that it was. It oh, well, it's very large. Yeah, it's large. Then the run says. Yeah, but a couple. Right. 
Shema Sivsisiyah nice. Maybe her lips are nice. This obviously, no, they're thick. Shema Tzavarna, maybe her neck is nice. Shakatu, no, it's very low. Shema Krisiana, maybe her stomach is nice. The Tzavahu, no, it's uh, bloated. Shema Ragla, nice. Maybe her feet are nice. Rechavis Kishalavs, no, they're wide like a duck. Shema Shmana, maybe she has a pretty name. There's no, Lachlucha Shema. Her name actually means dirt. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, this is a guy that's married to this woman, and he says, um, uh, You can't have any benefit from me unless the rabbi can find something good about you. So the rabbi is looking for something good. This is his wife. Why did he marry her? Oh, no, the whole backstory. Yeah, there's oh, a whole story oh, why he married her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, so Rabbi Shmuel says, "Amalehem, Yafet Kaira Nice Alachluches, Shem Alachluches B'Mumen." Okay, but uh, you know what's good about her is that her name actually matches her features. At least they didn't lie. It's a name, it's actually an accurate name. It's a perfect fit. Basharia, and he, uh, and he uh, permitted the vow, and, um, and uh, she was able to go back to her husband. Who bar Bavel, the Salak Lari of the Israel? There was someone from Bavel that came to the land of Israel. Nasivitza. He married a woman in Israel. Amalah, he said to her, Bashili Trey Talfi. There's different versions of this, but one of them goes, he says, cook for me two lentils. So she'll eat three talfish. She cooked two lentils. Sounds like Amelia Bedelia. Right? She did exactly the... Uh, he got angry. Just cook for me a saw. A saw is a, a griva. It's a measurement. A large measurement. But she'll griva, so she cooked a large measurement. I would have thought she would have cooked the, the measuring cup. But... <laughs> so... Um, Amalei, zili, icily, tre, butzini. Bring me two, uh, butzini means melons. Azas, icily, tre, shragi. She brought two candles because butzina, butzina could also mean a candle. In, uh, in Kabbalah, butzina could mean a candle. It's not, and usually it doesn't mean a melon in Kabbalah. Amalei, zili, tabi, yasin, al, resha, He says, I guess he's angry about this as well. He says, go break these on the head of the, the, uh, Bava is a door. Like Baba Basra, you know, there's a gate ahead of the gateway. The Yasif Baba Ben Buta Abava, the Kadayan Dina. So Baba Ben Buta, one of the great sages, um, he was a student of Shammai. And um, he was one that was blinded by uh, Hurdus. He gave Hurdus the advice to rebuild the. Uh, in Kabbalah, his, his, uh, his Gilgal is Rapshashas. Baba, ba, uh, Baba in Atbash. That's what she says. Chadoi nafshoi. She says, referring to which soul was getting benefit from this. It was the original soul or his soul. Anyway, so Baba Ben Buta is the judge. He's at the gate. Also, so he uh, she breaks the uh, candles on on uh, the head of Baba Ben Buta. So Amalei, my my thing to have this. He says, what was that all about? So uh, Amalei, she said to him, my husband said I should. So she, she's a very literal. Uh, Amar, he says, you did the will of your husband. Ebrista should give you two children, just like, like Baba Ben Buta. It was a, she got a blessing. So, you have a good Shabbos, everyone.